other is in uh, the software engine here at uh, Heal Technologies, and he loves hardware, but since two years he is also working on OTA, and today he's talking about some new OTA updates for small devices with Octane and Riot. Yep. Uh, can you hear me well? Yes. Yeah. Cool. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I must warn you, it's more like a use case. I'm more Riot user than Riot developer, so don't be surprised. Uh, <coughs> So the whole story is about Uptane, uh, and uh, Uptane is a specification. It's not the standard yet, uh, but we are working on the standard together with like standardizing group. So it's one of our procedures for secure over there updates all over the wire as, as you like. Our uh, alternative solution is Skew that is well known in Red community. Uh, so, Uptane is based on TUF, uh, the update framework. It was developed by Tor project people uh, and widely adopted. Uh, we as a company have one of the implementation, there's another one, and I'm not aware about <coughs> any other, but probably some of them exist as well. Uh, so, we already had uh, our client implementation for Linux and this work with Riot was to make it available on MCUs as well. Uh, so yeah, our goal, goal was a static library, so uh, that doesn't include uh, transport, how do you um, tra uh, how do you bring the firmware on the device that doesn't include encryption, that can also custom, doesn't include bootloader, just a library with so uh, procedures are so demo platform the, on the hardware. The second board is a uh, automotive uh, developer board, just uh, controls some uh, powerful LEDs. You make you may make nice demos with it. Are uh, so why did we decide to take right? We already had some of. Some drafts for it. We decided it's better to keep code, at least BSP code, uh, in upstream instead of just keeping it in our project. Uh, it already had a ISOTP protocol implementation developed by Vincent. Here, or you can refer to slides from the last summit. Uh, and I believe it right, has a bootloader implementation, but it doesn't. Uh, so. Uh, uh, we still see it as a great opportunity to contribute to Riot uh, and the bootloader code. So what, as a result, we have, have this library, we have this uh, BSP code uh, on a pair of bridge, please review. Uh, the, we have our demo in our repository on a pair. Uh, we have a lot of plans for the future. Uh, so uh, I will uh, tell a bit about Uptane, what it is, uh, why it exists. Uh, we'll try to construct the system a bit step by step to understand why different elements of Uptane are there at all. So if we uh, consider a very basic system that just consists of an ECU and OTA ser server, many OTA systems end up end there. So we have uh, may get list of packages, uh, 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 choose what to install uh, uh, and install it. Uh, and this uh, scenario is still realistic in some of our embedded well embedded systems like IDI when which can run Android or some user controlled uh, OT. Uh, and this is basically, it's not obtained yet, it's more tough. Uh, so how this metadata will look like, it has, first of all, you can see it has two large sections, one is signatures, one is signed. So it's a signed metadata, uh, naturally. Uh, it contains the list of targets available together with hashes and length. Uh, it can also expire so that uh, the attacker can't uh, trick your device into installing something old and vulnerable. Uh, and yeah, it's also versioned to prevent uh, uh, rollback attacks. 
And as we can see, there is a key ID where we get this key ID from. Uh, well, of course, we have some key material provisions uh, always, uh, but keys tend to be comprom become compromised over time. So we also need some way of key rotation here. Uh, and so another piece of metadata is uh, on the left you see the same targets metadata. Or on the right you can see the root metadata is also signed. Uh, so you can uh, sign new root metadata with all the metadata and update keys. If you uh, look at root metadata, it contains list of uh, keys available. Or uh, can you see the one? Yes, contains list of list of keys available and also list of mapping keys to roles, which are root targets, and there are several other other sites. Just keep them for brevity. Uh, and so where so, so this was just stuff. Uh, it's uh, what's already adopted, like in PIP or some other places, where obtain comes into play. There uh, is uh, when we introduce two servers. Uh, so obtain is basically double tough. We have director server and images server, and now director server can tell the device what it should install. That's more like what we want for our embedded and not non-manned systems. Uh, so yeah, they still have the same uh, metadata, targets metadata is a bit different for director. Uh, and what's uh, interesting here from the security point of view is that uh, director is more, it's normally run uh, running on some running online it's some service like in, in here we have our implementation of director uh, and uh, this metadata what device what it should install what is updated in runtime so the keys should also be stored on some on this server or uh, online they should be ready available uh, but the, for images server uh, for images server that contains list of packages available, we can have these uh, metadata signed on the offline. So that, for instance, our users, our customers can uh, sign this metadata on their own and control mm -hmm. critical part of security. Uh, uh, because, well, the procedure as you can see, for instance, are, uh, you see so you ask director, uh, asks the director what to install, but then uh, it should uh, go to images methods server to ask what packages are available. And if the router is compromised, but images are not, uh, then uh, the device will not be compromised. That's you know, why we need to update. And we also have a uh, possibility to report uh, current state of the device to the director so that user can, uh, can know how uh, what's installed and if the installation has succeeded or so. So yeah, again, I just I'm just so showing the sign part signatures uh, skipped. So on the left we see directors. The format is a bit different. So we have this big custom field, which tells uh, which uh, devices the uh, image should be installed to, and there is a mapping. So. Uh, second firmware here is mapped to second firmware here, and you can also verify that hashes matches and length matches, and both uh, pieces of metadata are signed with different keys, so, so that you can cross-check uh, what you install. And yeah, uh, it's also signed really, so there is also signatures, so it's signed with devices over key, uh, so device confirms to the server that it's has it really installed uh, the image, or it can report that some attack has, has been detected. Uh, so, and of course, in especially in our automotive scenario, yeah, well, by the way, we're talking about automotive market. Uh, so, yeah, ECU is a fancy automatic name for a device. Uh, in case you didn't know. Uh, so, uh, yeah, there can be some devices, uh, they, there's, there's normally just one device uh, that's connected to the server directly and all the other devices are just connected to this uh, device.
device well. That's reasonable from the security point of view. Uh, and what we want to achieve is what we want to achieve end-to-end -end security from secondary to the servers. So that if you, even if you compromise the primary, your secondary should not be compromised. Uh, and that's where we need the libuptide, where, where we need, well, it can run right as well. Most of our customers will not be happy with running right, I believe, but uh, uh, well, because nobody likes uh, open source. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, uh, the same directory targets metadata uh, can contain multiple targets for multiple issues. That's uh, and manifest. Uh, yeah, manifest uh, combined manifest will contain multiple signed sub manifests for, from each devices. So even if your primary is compromised, uh, your secondary can still report. Hasn't installed, well, it's installed, or at least uh, it will not report if it's successfully installed, but it should have installed. Uh, and yeah, just for completeness, uh, we all can also have uh, this tough feature called delegations, where one images server can delegate trust to another images server. That's also a very common scenario where uh, the car itself is developed and and update by one party, maybe the car vendor, and devices and device firmwares are maintained by some other parties. So, yeah. So, our again, goal of, uh, yeah, goal of update is provide, provide, well, up, live up time is to provide end to end security from here to actually here because it's a so called in update partially verified. Verify uh, device so, so that you don't have to verify too many signatures every time. Uh, on a small, non powerful device, uh, you can verify just metadata from here and then uh, quite, yeah, uh, com uh, compromise, simultaneously compromise director and primary, so you will compromise secondary, of course, but it's uh, still a pretty good level of security. Uh, so that's pretty much it about Uptain. Uh, I will go to implementation features. Mm. So yeah, uh, you, you, you can see that all the metadata before is JSON. Our Uptain actually uh, specifies ASIN1 formats for metadata, but it takes a while to convince backend developer to implement it. So right now we have to work with JSON, uh, which is a pain on uh, ECU. Uh, it's better than XML anyway. Uh, <laughs> you know, Automotive Vault like, loves XML, but we are a progressive automotive company. Uh, so, uh, yeah, how do we parse it on, uh, on MCU? So, there are two. So <laughs> an approach, uh, there's, yeah, we are probably familiar with XML terminology, so there's uh, DOM parsers that just produce a whole tree uh, when after parsing, and there is a sex parsing parsers that produce parse the metadata token by token. Uh, but, yeah, we can't actually use any of it, and so we implement some, some our own. Uh, so the example of the DOM parse and you can see here, so there is a metadata uh, and then you produce the whole tree like object, is top, there's top, top objects, there are four children, type, expires, targets, and version, and like so, so <coughs> uh, it's nice. Uh, it's very easy to parse, uh, you know, like from the algorithm point of view, on from the maintainability, the code will be simple. You can traverse everything at once. <coughs> That's good. You have the visibility. Uh, the problem is that in the metadata we have around 200 to 300, and it comes even more bytes per target in metadata and target metadata. 
and they can be up to uh, even up to a hundred devices on, in a car. So we just can't physically keep this amount of data in the memory. Uh, and don't forget that at some point we'll also have to keep both JSON, probably both JSON and the first. Uh, so unfortunately we can't do this. So one natural alternative would be first a token by token. So like here we start with, we have some tokenizer, and it feeds it to our algorithm, so we see opening uh, object, type, targets, expires, when, when it expires, the targets again, opening objects, blah, blah, blah. So it expires, uh, units. So the question is what we see this, our algorithm sees this idea unit. Uh, it should decide where we are right now, what has been parsed, what has, uh, has not yet been parsed. So it turns out the state explodes really fast. Uh, the code becomes unmaintainable, or even, even for such simple uh, algorithm in practice, it's are unrealistic. Uh, probably code generators could help for if anyone can do it. I think it will be available not just for our project uh, parsing JSON in stream fashion. I think it will be available. But yeah, we decided not to take this approach. So what we really wanted uh, is something in between. So we want to our obtain our code to operate with uh, meaningful chunks of data. Are like uh, opening top object is a meaningful uh, event. Uh, having type targets pass top bar pair is a meaningful event. Okay. The same for expires. The same for yeah, opening targets object. Uh, and the same for each individual target. Uh, so these are still uh, makes good visibility, but we don't have to keep uh, the whole tree at once in the memory. Uh, yeah. uh, so what we used, uh, JSMN is a uh, minimalistic, I would rather, rather call it a tokenizer, but it also provides some min minimal uh, information about the structure. Uh, so, what we, I, I won't show you any code, it's in the repo, I don't think it's fun. Uh, uh, but, yeah, so the idea is basically that the data is streamed and we report how much of the data we can parse, and then if we couldn't parse it, then it should be fed, uh, fed to us again. And there's a bit of hacking uh, associated with rewinding JSMN to the last point when we stopped what we couldn't parse yet. Uh, I wouldn't call it tiny despite the name, so it's still 8K without crypto, without transport, just the parsing plus the logic. Uh, but yeah, the next step is to convince our people to use x one CV or this one. Uh, this is usable, it works. Uh, so, yeah, why I'm telling you all this to try uh, stuff. So, uh, yeah, we have interfaced the crypto library and the dot tiny uh, as a fragment, it's really simple. Uh, uh, we've made a write application. Uh, yeah, if you feel like contributing to it, uh, it would be great. Or maybe we can wait until we will integrate with Writes OTA. Uh, hope to start working on it soon. Uh, again, yeah, there's BSP code still here. Uh, by the way, uh, <coughs> improvements I've uh, yeah uh, stuck into some bugs in N HTTP. I'm not sure where we, where they are, uh, but yeah, with some uh, amount of hacking tuning, it works. Uh, here are the following. Uh, so there are useful links for those who want to know more about Uptain. Uh, and the, <coughs> our code is all open source, so 
actualizer, basically we return to this slab. Sorry. Uh, So uh, actualizer is a record when we keep all our stuff client uh, uh, side stuff. So there is a basically it started as a code for this part for primary CU. But now with Lego file has code for secondary CUs, so minimalistic secondaries. And it also has uh, some uh, test and reference implementation of the server side. So basically, it's fully open source update system. You can use it. Uh, uh, like the server side is not really production ready, so for production, you have either our closed source stuff or have OTA community edition, um, which is uh, like Kubernetes uh, scripts deploying some Scala code, not really. Easy to understand what's happening there, but yeah, we have this reference implementation, and I hope that the standard will be this standard draft will be available before the end of this year. So we have more open source implementations. Um, so yeah, again, uh, links uh, for those interested. This man, very nice piece of uh, code. Right, you know, all know where right is. So, thank you for listening. Thanks to all the right maintainers and contributors. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, uh, thank you for the presentation. I'm checking the, the specification you have in Google Docs and that you use already ITF terminology. And am I assuming, I mean, am I? Right to assume that you're submitting a draft to ITF somewhere, or uh, uh, so uh, the specification. Uh, it's uh, yeah, it, it, it was really uh, drafted more like a framework, so it's uh, very open towards how you implement it. And if you look into somewhere somewhere here, there should be a link to a GitHub repo. And in GitHub repo, there is a uh, uh, well, yeah, there's a repo for standard. Uh, it's pretty empty right now, so there is just outline. But there is a Google, there is a, yeah, uh, Google the, Doc. The, the Google Doc, uh, there is a uh, so the Google Doc describes the framework, how you do it in general. But uh, it's not a standard in, in that it doesn't really let you uh, make interoperable uh, systems. So it leaves many open questions, open questions for implementation. And the standard uh, aims to be really a standard how you should do it, uh, so that you can build, uh, one party can build something server, other party can build something client, and they work together seamlessly. And, and when, so when you mean standard, I'm just saying in this because in the SUT working group, that they're doing SUT, yeah. uh, it's uh, relatively early for ITF uh, uh, technology, it's mm -hmm. relatively early work. So uh, other companies would be, now you know, would be a good time to contribute and to, to modify the <coughs> manifest file if you want to have it in a different format or to, to put it, to, you know, to give your input. Uh, yeah, uh, uh, like I'm not uh, among the like maintainers of these standards, so uh, I have got the impression that they don't want to go with, with the draft further. Uh, so you, when you mean the maintainer of these standards, you mean the, the ITF stand for what, what the, the standard? The, 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 uh, the, uh, the obtain uh, IATF stand. There is no obtain. Uh, maybe, maybe not IATF. But so there is the, the, in the ITF, there is a working group working exactly on this software yeah. updates for IoT. On, on suit, yeah. On suit, yes. Yeah. And um, they are relatively early. And uh, you know, at the moment, you have mostly embed of and other uh, uh, device makers, mm -hmm. and it would be a good time for this kind of input to go there and find <coughs> the standard. Uh, to, oh, yeah. uh, sorry, to have a common solution instead of two different yeah. standards. Yeah, sorry, I didn't understand you. Yeah, so sorry. yeah, we'll uh, definitely have plans to uh, 
make a draft for something like Octane over Suit. So, like Suit, as far, uh, my impression about Suit that it's more low level uh, about manifest format and all this stuff, and Octane aims to define these roles and architecture and this stuff. So, yeah, I think they can be made to, to work together. Yeah, I mean, like, there's also an, architect, an architecture document. But, like, what I mean is, like, if you are aware of the work and, you know, yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. want to take over. Yeah, uh, I, I'm aware of the work still obtained group as a separate group, so I'm not in a position to say. No, 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 but uh, it's, it's outside of yeah. society. And, ah, yeah. and the point is, really says you should try to push your community yeah, yeah. towards IETF and uh, get engaged there. Um, you're so, looking for a yeah. I, I believe update community is aware of shoot existence. So for some yeah. reason they yeah. still want to do their stuff. Maybe we can discuss this later. Yeah. Okay, then thanks again to all of the speakers. <laughs> and those speakers who give a talk in the last session or the next session. And did not copy the slides to Sebastian, please come by and thanks.